Hi, I'm Adam Culp, and you're at BeastCast. Today, I'm going to show you getting started with WSL2. So stick around, and we'll get right on that. So WSL2 is the latest version from Microsoft of the Windows subsystem for Linux. Previously, with version 1, there was a lot of translation going on between the subsystem for Linux and Windows. But with version 2, they took a little different approach. It's now virtualized. So instead, it's a lightweight virtual machine with some tight Windows integrations to allow for file sharing and things like that and, and under using some of the underlying pieces in Windows. To get started, it's important that you first have the proper version of Windows 10 or, or greater. With Windows 10, you want to make sure that you have version 2004, at least uh, build 19041.264 uh, or greater. So to see this, in uh, Windows PowerShell, you would type in WinVer and then it would open up your Windows version. And you can see here that I have version 20H2. Another thing that might be required is in your BIOS. You want to make sure that you have virtualization turned on. Some BIOS and the motherboards do not have it turned on by default. So you want to make sure that you have that active in order to proceed because we are going to be using a virtual machine and there are, there are extra benefits from the BIOS to facilitate using virtual machines. I can't really go into details on that because I would have to boot into my BIOS to show that. And chances are, depending on your motherboard, the BIOS may be different. So it's, it's just too hard to show that in a duplicatable manner. But do a search for, from your motherboard vendor uh, that, that created the motherboard that you have in your system. And usually they have instructions on how to do that. So now that we've verified that we have the proper version of Windows, it's now time to activate the Windows features. So if we type in the start and look for Windows features turn off and on, uh, we can open that up here. And we want to scroll down until we see Virtual Machine Platform. So we're scrolling down, we see Virtual Machine Platform here. We want to check that box for Virtual Machine Platform. And then we also want to check the box for Windows Subsystem for Linux. So just those two options is all that's needed to use WSL2. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and Windows will uh, install those two features so that we're ready to use them. Now, as you do this, once this is completed, it's going to prompt for a restart of your system. You do have to restart in order, to, in order for it to be active and able to use. Okay, and there's a screen for restart. So I'm going to restart and then uh, come back to this video. So now that the reboot is done, the system is up and running, we now have WSL2 installed. To verify that, we're going to go to the command line and take a look there. So for this example, I'm going to use PowerShell. So let me go ahead and open up PowerShell. And in PowerShell, we want to type in WSL and we want to list. And then we're going to put uh, verbose on here to give us a little bit more information about what's there. Now, previously, I, I have had WSL2 running on my system already and already had Docker working using WSL2. Um, I might create a video later on how to set that up, but for right now, just notice uh, that, that I do have WSL2 installed. Um, I've got a, a boon, an, one install of Ubuntu 20.04, and you'll notice that these machines are running in version 2. Uh, by default, when you install WSL2, it's going to use version 1 instead of version 2, even though you just installed uh, the, the latest version. So one of the things you'll want to do first to ensure that you're using version 2 is you'll want to type in WSL and uh, you want to set the default, set default version and then space and then 2. And then by doing that, you tell WSL2 that you would like to use version 2 instead of version 1. Now, in my case, it happened really quickly because I was already running that as my default version. It may take a moment for it to finish on your system. 
uh, now that we're using WSL2 by default, and keep in mind that you can alter the default version to one or two simply by changing the number at the end of the command that I just did. Now, if you have a virtual machine that is, if you accidentally got too far and you've already got a VM that is version one, you could type in WSL set version and then you would put in the name of the of the virtual machine and then after that you would put one or two or whatever the case might be you know if you want to make that change and by hitting enter here it would change that virtual machine with the name ubuntu 2004 to version 2. i'm not going to do that because it's already running version 2. Um, and th th now after we have verified that we have that set as our default, now we're ready to install some Lin uh, Linux installations. So by uh, going to the Windows Store, uh, I'm going to go to Store. And in the store, I'm going to click Search and type Ubuntu. And the store will find the Ubuntu that's available. There's 20.04 and there's also 18.04, the LTS versions. So, so if I were to click 18.04, for instance, because I already have 20.04 installed, um, it will eventually come up. And for the first prompt it's going to give you is to get that version. So once that comes up in the store, then you would click the get button. When you click get, it's going to download that uh, install of Ubuntu. It's not going to install it quite yet. After you get it, then this button will change to install. And, it, and it's, that's how you would install uh, a, a virtual machine running Ubuntu 18.04. If you already had an install of 18.04, you could uh, click on the drop down. Let me show you that. If I, if I go back to the search for Ubuntu and I go to 20.04, which I've already got an install of 2004. You can see there's a launch here, so I could launch it and start using it, or I can click on these buttons and I can install on my device. So I could do an additional install of 2004 if I so desired. On the other hand, if I just wanted to launch it, I could launch it from here. Um, now, once it's installed, you don't have to come into the Windows Store to launch it every time. What I could do is I could type in Ubuntu right from my start menu and, and it comes right up in the start menu so then I can hit enter and it will launch the instance of Ubuntu and now what you're seeing here on the screen is actually Ubuntu running on Windows and it was just that fast it only takes seconds for it to come up it's very fast one other thing that you might run into as you're doing that install that I forgot to mention is um, it's going to prompt you. There's going to uh, the first time you install Ubuntu uh, from the store, you're going to get an error, something about WSL register or yeah register distribution, and it, there's going to be a URL there. And you want to click the link and just download that that uh, that kernel update and save it to your local system and then run it. And it, you'll have to do that in order for it to complete the installation. So I'm not going to do that because I've already installed it on my system, but just keep in mind that you will need to do that the first time you try to install Ubuntu in a VM on WSL2 immediately after installation and getting it set up. While you're doing your install of Ubuntu, it's going to prompt you for the user and the password to set as the default for the root user. Uh, in my case, I made it Adam Culp. And, and in my, in my uh, directory here, if I just do an LS, I've got some I've got some basic things here like setting up a, a AWS CLI, and I've also got another thing called UWS Sites that is a, a symbolic link to another location within the uh, Linux installation. <clears throat> and but for all intents and purposes, if I if I type cd to slash. You can see this is just a standard install of, of Linux right on Windows. It's kind of disconcerting the first time that you run Ubuntu on Windows, 
uh, a lot of folks are like, oh, well, what can I do with it? Well, the thing is, is you can do just about anything you want with it. It is a full install of, of Ubuntu. Uh, it's a VM, so it's fully functional. If you want to do apt-get to, apt to get and do some install of other packages, you, you can certainly do that, such as maybe you want to install Apache 2. Maybe you want to install PHP or Python or, or any other application that you would normally run in a development environment or your, or your, your Linux environment. So uh, my my install, I have a, a server on it and I use it for development. I've got some symbolic links pointing to other places within the virtual machine. If I change directory to MNT, I can list what's there and we can see that I have a shortcut to the C drive. I've got a shortcut to the F drive because I've got a secondary drive. Those shortcuts are really handy because if I were to if I were to list the contents of that C drive, you can see here I'm, I'm getting all my Windows directories on the C drive and, and things that are listed that I'm allowed to see from within this machine. In virtual machines, we typically find that accessing uh, files on your host machine can be very slow. WSL2 is still a little bit sluggish, but not nearly as slow as in the past with other virtual machines. And I've found that I can, it's really usable as far as uh, development goes. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, please remember to like the video down below. The likes really help a lot and uh, help spread the word so other folks can find this who might be searching for this sort of video. Uh, I appreciate your time and I hope, uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you.